Good night and good luck. An extremely impressive feature directed by George Clooney, scripted by Clooney with Grant Heslov, shot by the evocative Robert Elswit, detailing the tension and conflict between infamous Senator Joseph McCarthy of the United States and CBS television journalist Edward Morrow, portrayed by David Strephan. McCarthy portrays himself via stock footage, an absolutely brilliant device, certainly the smartest production decision versus actually having an actor mimic the man inevitably as a bumbling or overly dastardly caricature. I think you have to present McCarthy in that era as is, rather than try to illustrate it as an expressionistic or just dramatic otherwise period affair, because one runs the risk of turning the whole era into some banal good versus evil pat on the back for Hollywood, who were also significantly affected by the Red Scare of the earlier 1950s in America. Good Night and Good Luck is much better at realising the era, the psychological dimension of the McCarthy moment, than the average typical attempt to retell it would be, necessarily film dramas or drama period, reduces the nuance of history into a pair of opposing teams. Yet it vitally underscores the dangers which McCarthy proposed to pose to anyone's idea of a healthy democracy, and on thoroughly bipartisan terms, as all the president's men, I think, distilled regarding the Watergate scandal, in my own opinion. Rather than being the cosmopolitan neoliberal left jerking themselves off over being allowed to continue receiving a certain paycheck, no seriously, the McCarthy who Akira in general was extremely brutal, although I think sometimes overshadowed and of more malignant character was the so-called Lavender Scare, which had run parallel to the McCarthy hearings and sought to identify it with slander or just both really suspect just both really suspected homosexual men working for the United States government or armed forces. The consequences for the men who were subjected to these investigations or trials, homosexual or heterosexual, was complete and total social-cultural suicide, whereas, at least in the case of the Hollywood Reds or alleged Reds, the blacklisted communists could rear their heads again during the 60s. The victims of the Lavender Scare were done, forced to live as though in a witness protection program for the rest of their lives, one does easily imagine. I am disappointed that the film doesn't really truly invoke why the McCarthy era is relevant to a contemporary, or any era of, democratic political societies, although this might have been stretching the film's capacity to operate as the fluid, seamless, informative period piece, which it is, and a highly engaging, watchable, and thrilling piece at that, too. McCarthy is worth being brought up for reasons beyond that it made a bunch of sometimes elitist and entitled Hollywood actors or industry people in general act like no one was ever more victimised than them for a 10 to 12 year period. And it was horrible for them, truly, but as I inferred, I think there was a bit more to this era than just that, and maybe this film didn't illuminate this enough, the wider story or the potential relevance of the McCarthy moment for our societies now, and for the rest of their existence anyway, and can be dismissed as some Hollywood playing the victim over the McCarthy era again, even though it doesn't involve Hollywood actors as characters, it doesn't involve the media, for whatever that's worth. But even if it is, they delivered a pretty terrific film out of this familiar feeling, I would argue that.